guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're talking about the total food control. It is coming guys, it's absolutely coming. Sooner or later, this is what they want. This is total control of what we do or in fact won't be able to do. Uh, you might have seen this in the news or in articles everywhere, but first of all we're covering is the chicken keeping. You've seen guys potentially, I've done a video about a year ago about keeping the chickens and I've showed my reservations on the current rules and legislations, what we can or cannot do as a chicken keepers. And at the time I actually mentioned that rules weren't there, all you had to do is to register flocks if you have 50 chickens or more. And I had my concerns of thinking at some point they would want us to register every single chicken, even if you have one. Hey presto, the first steps have been made and the government now is encouraging us to actually registering chickens. Even if you have just one chicken, they ideally want you to register. It's not something that's currently a legal thing that you have to do. However, they are saying that you're encouraged to do this. And the way they're kind of wording this saying you will be helping the spread of avian flu. You will be the chicken hero. You know, that kind of thing, right? And, well that being not been funny guys, but apparently avian flu has been spreading anyway. We know this, but avian flu has been around for years. As a responsible chicken keeper, you keep an eye on the websites where they publish about certain chicken flu or bird flu outbreaks, so you will know anyway. So when they ask you to register, if you actually have a look through, there's information they want obviously about you or whoever's keeping the chickens, you can register on somebody else's behalf, the amount of birds do you keep, uh, what breed the birds are and the reason why you're keeping the birds. Well, first of all, the one of the just questions just pops into my head. Why on earth do you need to know why I'm keeping my chickens if it's truly there just to basically spread the, um, the avian flu? It doesn't matter whether they're keeping for eggs or for the meat. It really doesn't matter. If you want to know that I have chickens so you can let me know, then just keep it at that. You technically don't even need to know the amount of chickens I have, okay? So long as, if I say you have chickens, okay, for whatever reason I choose to have them, you can just notify me as a, you know, registered keeper. There is a current outbreak somewhere in the area and obviously don't let the chickens out. So that's that. But of course, guys, we know they want far more information and they want far more control. If you are proper, you're probably kind of following on the similar footnotes. As we know, guys, obviously, we know the current plans for the agenda, what they want with the food food chain and how they want us to control. Hungry people are easily controlled. I always said that. So this kind of thing is a first step, I think a big step, towards trying to gain this control of the what we have or able to produce in our own households. So of course at the moment, as, it is, as I said, it's voluntary, but I'm pretty sure give it another year and they'll be absolutely compulsory. So the next thing as well, you've probably seen this, but there are multiples of articles again online and they are basically heading, uh, headed, headings like uh, community gardens have six times the carbon footprint of agriculture and carbon footprint of homegrown food five times greater than those grown conventionally. So they've got five times and they have a six times. So, you know, slightly contra contradictory information there. But I had to look for a couple of them and it is absolutely, honestly, it is ridiculous. You know, they, of course, they'll push the... Um, the global warming is the agenda. We know global warming is basically a money-making machine. Things are happening, we all know, if you know, you know. But nonetheless, they, they can't even get the correct percentages right in like both of the articles. But anyway, I was reading through guys and it's honestly, it's just laughable. The things they say, for example, if you are an allotment, you're growing, people growing as a group and then they're saying things like, but the wood that you use to make a raised bed and all the pathways in between but the wood rots and creates the CO2 and it basically is really not good for the environment where the farmers on a must, you know, must produce things and they don't have raised bed, not this, this and that. But it's honestly, if you actually think about it to the stuff, if you've read this, um, it's actually laughable. First of all, wood, whether it's made by raised bed or just sits there in a skip pile, rotting away, it, first of all, it makes no odds. Secondly, not even mentioning in the general agriculture in the big safe farms, all those pesticides they use that they kill bees. I wonder, is that matter? Does that matter to global warming? Does that matter to, you know, people growing stuff? I don't know, but that's okay, you know. But then again, when they start saying about as well in the personal gardening as well, obviously, you grow in your own stuff, it's actually bad for the environment. And there will be some people who will read this, and this is probably part of the idea, they'll say, 
oh my god, I can't be doing this. I cannot be growing my own food because it is bad for the climate change. So rather than me wanting to grow my own coriander in a pot in my own garden and produce my little carbon footprint, uh, let's go to the supermarket and just buy this because it's grown commercially. Oh, nobody cares that it's actually flown all the way from Kenya and how much of the air miles is actually costed to actually get it here. But that's okay because we're saving, you know, CO2 here, but yet we're kind of, you know, spending a CO2 somewhere else, if that makes sense. And I urge you guys, just Google and have a look. Those articles, they just, just make no sense. It is the things, the examples that they put forward. It's just, it's almost embarrassing for whoever's written this. And the way they calculated the CO2 per plate, per serving, is just absolutely ridiculous. But it is so much out there and it's so bad. They give you another example. If you watch the BBC Gardener's World, I do not watch obviously BBC anymore. We don't pay license. We don't watch any live TV. But I used to watch Monty Don, okay? And he was a great, he's a gardening personality. He's been going around for absolutely years. And genuinely, he was all about um, just gardening, just plain gardening. But for the past few years when I was watching that, they drummed in this whole climate change idea to the, to the fact that Poor bloke, rather than talking about generally planting up and gardening and just doing stuff, end up talking about not using plastic pots and recycling this. And he'll spend half of the program talking about CO2 emissions with certain things. And it's again, it's totally ruined the program. And I think they lost a lot of views. They certainly lost me, not I wouldn't have been watching that anyway. But the whole agenda, the whole thing, they, the guys that they're pushing this, and I'm sure. If you know, you know, if you understand the whole current, the bigger picture, it's so important, I think, as a prepper to know and understand what is actually happening around us and trying to kind of, not say fight back because we can't really potentially fight, but I think when we're talking about, you know, somebody telling you, you know what, you're not going to be allowed to um, grow anything in a garden because it creates, you know, too much CO2, but we're happily to import all our fruits and vegetables halfway across the world, this is okay. Do you see where I'm coming from? And I've mentioned this before, guys, that I've seen people in America saying that somewhere in certain states, please just find if somebody knows or heard this, that apparently they're encouraging you to actually register your growing space like they are encouraging us to register chickens. Just think about it. When they fully get the whole picture of what it is that we do, by registering, say, your garden or registering your livestock, whether you have your chickens as a pet or not, it's totally irrelevant. They literally build a whole picture. So if at any point... They want you to get rid of or not do something. They'll make sure they accomplish this because they have everything they can possibly have on you or the, on the database already. And this is absolutely ridiculous. So point of the story, guys, have a research, have, have a look around and have a read this and make yourself laugh, to be fair. But the point is that for all of you who think that the total food control, this is not what they are after or amongst other control things, Please think again, because this is exactly the way it's heading. So anyway, this is me, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.